Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Meet the Expert workshop. My name is Stefan, and I'm part of the My World of Work live team here at Skills Development Scotland. First of all, I'd just like to give a big shout out to everyone joining us today from Bigger High School, Thornock Academy, Felder Glen High School, and St Philip's School, Berwickshire High, Lock In Community School, and the Gordon Schools. And for anybody else that's joining us today, thank you. So My World of Work Live is about helping you to understand future careers and what skills might be required for these careers in the, the future. So in today's session, we're going to cover a quick overview of the construction sector. We are going to have a look at some of the opportunities within the, the sector, which Bethany will be able to allude to a bit more in depth. I'm then going to introduce you to our expert for today, Bethany Welsh from Balfour Beatty. And we will also allow you throughout the, the opportunity to ask questions. So please, by all means, the Q&A box is below and I would encourage you as much as possible to get involved. So ask away your questions throughout the session and we will do our best to get through as many as we can today. So just before I introduce you to Bethany, let's have a look at some of the information for the construction sector. So. There are over 120,000 people that work in the engineering industry within Scotland, and we're very lucky to be joined by one of those today in Bethany. Only 22% of those who work in the industry are women, so quite, quite a staggering statistic and something that the Scottish Government is always working towards increasing. There's a demand as well for project, project engineers, design engineers, IT specialists, robotics engineers, and so on. And again, Bethany will speak a bit more in depth about some of these roles today. So just to give you a bit of an insight about engineering of the future, especially since we're, we're currently going through a, a pandemic and people are concerned about how that might affect jobs and stuff like that. So for me personally, I think there's no better time like now than to find out from the industry experts. So Engineering companies are projected to need 182,000 people with engineering skills each year until 2022. So as you can tell, that is relatively close. And if, if it goes as fast as this year, we will obviously be trying to get those skills over the next couple of years. The UK will also need twice the number of graduates and apprentices entering the engineering industry. So once again, Bethany will be able to give you a bit more of an insight into that. So Hopefully today the session with Bethany will give you a bit of an insight into the, the Scottish industry and how people are going to need certain skills and stuff like that to get into the, the sector. Okay, So I'm just going to pass you over now to Bethany Welsh from Balfour Beatty and Bethany will be able to give you a lot more detail about what she does on her role and how the, the construction industry works. Okay, Thank you Stefan. So Hi everybody, my name is Bethany Welsh and I am an apprentice civil engineer up in the north of Scotland. I work for Balfour Beatty and I'd just like to start off by telling you a bit about my story and if you have any questions throughout this chat, um, please put them in the Q&A and we'll answer them in the end. So I attended Fawers Academy when I was in school. Um, so my favourite subject was uh, graphic communication and sort of technical studies. And because of this, I decided to look at architecture from a young age. It was probably only 12 or 13 when I decided to look into the industry. And then with the help of my teachers, I explored other careers and found that civil engineering. Um, I did lots of research and knew at the time that university for full time just wasn't for me. And the apprentice route seemed to have lots more opportunities and real world experience, as well as being able to earn and learn, which is a huge benefit to me. In school, I was introduced to Skills Development Scotland and the Construction Industry Training Board, also known as CITB. And I attended an assessment centre um, session when I was at school just to show what level of understanding in construction I had at the time. So I was really good and passed this at technician level. And then the CITB sort of helped out and gave me advice on what to do next. So I sent out my CV lots and lots, um, didn't get many calls back, but at the time I got a phone call from my local council, the Maura Council, and they asked if I would like to attend a mock interview. At the time they didn't have any job positions available, um, but it was still a great experience, so of course I went along for the day. 
on the day I met with the council's civil engineering team and <laughs> luckily for me there was employees of Balfour Beatty there on the day for who were there for a meeting about a new framework agreement that they were having and actually as part of that agreement and um, they had to take on an apprentice so I was really lucky um, and th that was me and um, so I joined Balfour Beatty in 2014 at age 17 on their modern apprenticeship scheme I attended Inverness UHI on a block release civil engineering course and then I went on to their graduate apprenticeship scheme and um, to gain my degree in 2018 and I've just recently graduated so that's another positive I've had um, about the apprenticeship scheme is I've been able to sort of learn and grow as time went on but also I've been able to have real life work and been able to attend courses such as health and safety and been able to gain my CSDS card which is vital for working in construction so another benefit and bonus, I guess I could say, was um, while we were in college, we were encouraged to apply for the Institute of Civil Engineers Quest Scholarship, which was right at the start of your career. And it was a recognition of your abilities um, and potential to go far in the industry and in engineering. And winning that at the start of my career was one of the proudest moments of my life. And I feel like <laughs> that kind of set me up and I've come on leaps and bounds since then. Um, and it just gave me that confidence to continue because I was so young and um, there was only two females in my class at the time and there was about 20 of us so you can imagine what it was like um, so I think that really sort of set me up and throughout my time with Balfour Beatty I've been extremely lucky to be exposed to so many different projects and um, I've worked on roads projects, bridges projects, I've been on power stations in the middle of nowhere floods alleviation projects and like managed my own projects which is um, just a huge huge um, benefit to me and at now only age 23 I've got so much experience and just in those first few years I've been able to grow and develop my expertise in all these fields is just really great so <laughs> there was a funny saying that we always used to say that civil engineers save more doctors it save more lives than doctors um, and that was just because um, we helped to get like your water from A to B without a civil engineer and the team you wouldn't have water in your houses and um, you wouldn't have <laughs> the sewage and stuff taken away it sounds really horrible to say but without it you'd have it in your garden and things like that it wouldn't be able to be taken away through different pipes um, and we have to um, build transport links so your roads your rail you'd, you'd struggle to get to work in London sometimes because um, we've got big projects such as cross rail um, which build huge huge tunnels and new um, stations and it's just so cool to see. Um, so we help create the real life structure from the drawings that we're given and help to solve the problems that come along with that um, because sometimes what you've got given on paper doesn't actually work in the real world. So you're constantly problem solving which is a huge part of engineering. And in 2018 um, I went in to join our Scotland work winning team and uh, learning a bit about pre-construction and that side of the business and Throughout that time, I just rotated along working with estimators, bid managers, quantity surveyors, planners and buyers working on tenders. And it was just a total eye opener to what goes on behind the scenes for me. Um, I found it very useful as sometimes um, when we're working on site, I did wonder why we do things a certain way. And um, sometimes it didn't make sense, but actually it made sense when you looked into pre-construction. And I understand like the processes we go through to win a job and I was able to actually use my site knowledge to help others understand difficulties that we had on site and it was really great because I worked in the planning department and um, doing programs for jobs that didn't even exist yet so we had to really look forward into the future and because of my knowledge I knew the processes in which we had to go through on site and to be able to add them to the program to make it realistic and this taught me that no matter how long someone had been in the industry it was always a learning day um, I was working with people that have been in the industry 20, 30 years. So it was great to be able to teach them too and learn so much from them. Um, and this was just my time to sort of educate myself and ask as many questions as I could just to build up more knowledge, which was great to be part of Balfour Beatty because they just give you that opportunity. So currently I am still on a secondment, but I'm working in a different team. I'm working in the community investments team. And this was just one thing I didn't think was important in construction, um, but it helps us connect with the communities which are which we're working in just to sort of leave a positive 
um, image of construction and Balfour Beatty. Um, so I regularly get to engage with schools and charities, local businesses, people in the community, just to show them what we are doing. Um, we're currently building a couple of hospital projects, so these are really important to the local community. And we've had to get really involved and throughout COVID as well, we've had to um, really, we worked the whole way through, so we really have to be careful and make sure that the communities know what's happening and um, just so there's no questions and things like that. But um, that's um, really important and that's one of the things you don't always think about construction. There's so many other jobs that exist in the industry that you just you don't see on the front line as you get as you can call it. So in 2018 as well, I was actually lucky enough to be given the title of Balfour Beatty's Apprentice of the Year. Um, this was a huge achievement to me, but they, I was told that it was down to my sort of encouraging behaviour and going above and beyond to speak about experiences and speaking positively about my work, um, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm here speaking to you guys today. So um, I just know it's so important. And as well as that, I also sit on the Scottish Apprenticeship Advisory Group, which is with Skills Development Scotland. And part of this, we talk about like apprenticeships and how they are and how they can be improved, what our experiences are. And recently, <laughs> back in March, I got the opportunity to speak at the Scottish Parliament and talk about how young people were the future and that apprenticeships were one of the best ways to get talent into the businesses. Um, so I've always known it's important to educate people and just share my experiences and knowledge with just as many people as I can, because if you don't know about it, you won't be able to ask questions and learn about it. And in fact, all of us at Balfour Beatty are really committed to providing like valuable work experience and industry experience. Um, but obviously due to the coronavirus, we've not been able to do that. So um, actually yesterday we kicked off and started a work experience programme virtually. So it's five weeks of learning all about um, jobs in the industry. And we've also got lots of experts within Balfour Beatty to talk about their job. And there's even some uh, behind the scenes um, parts of the project. So there's fly through videos and things like that. And if anyone would like to sort of join on to that, um, there's a link uh, or we can put the link up somewhere. Um, so it's, it's aimed at people aged like 12 to 18, but anyone can join. And um, we've got lots of exciting things happening. So it'd be great if you could join. And there's also a certificate at the end. And we're hoping, hopefully later in the week, to be able to announce something really special within um, the industry. So over the last six years, I've been faced with a lot of um, learning how to sort of do my work life study balance. Obviously, studying for a degree at the same time as full time job. It's been really difficult for me, but it's something you just have to learn. And I've also um, I've spoken in front of um, lots of people on live broadcast before just to tell about my experience. So, as I said, I started out in the industry age 17 as a site engineer, just sort of shadowing and learning on the job of how to be a civil engineer, all while um, doing my degree on block release. So I would work full time, um, but then because I was block release, I had sort of three blocks a year where I would attend college and learn all my studies or do my exams, which were really, um, really stressful weeks, but they were really worthwhile and you managed to get it all in one. So it was really good. And then you could go away to work and sort of ask questions with people at work or use their backgrounds and things. And it was really good. So, um, but everyone understood that I was on site um, but I was learning and not to be afraid to ask for help or questions and um, because most of my managers or people I worked with had been in the same situation, whether that be um, full time university because they know the studies, full time work because they've got the experience. And I was just really able to capture what I'd done. Um, and if I had any questions, like they'd be able to point me either if they couldn't answer it themselves, they could point me in the direction that they that would help me. So um, as they say, if you don't ask, you don't get. So um, I just really I played on this a lot. So um, life as an engineer and working in the industry has been great for me. Um, every day is always different and I get to work with people all over the country and I had to learn how to communicate with these different people. I was only well, 17, 18 when I started working with people like twice my age and I had to learn how to communicate and have conversations with them. Um, I'd be working with lots of different people. So from the client side, um, from the 
sort of then going from the client side to um, joiners and people on site where you have a different language with them because you're working with them every day. Um, not to say it wasn't as professional, but you, you had to learn how to read the language and talk to them. Um, I found that working in the industry was just such a motivation for me because um, I just wanted to make a change and make a difference. Um, the industry would always throw challenges at you, whether that be in work life at the time, um, you'd have a problem come up and you had to solve it there and then because if you didn't, the, the road wouldn't be able to get built sort of thing. So I always loved that feeling of accomplishment when, when we go over that hurdle. So it's also a great achievement to be able to drive over a bridge that you've been a part of constructing. Um, my family hates it because every time we drive over a certain bridge, I have to remind them that I was part of the construction of it. So it's always quite funny. Um, but it's completely different now. Construction is forever changing. So um, by 2050, they say that construction is going to be fully human off-site. So it's going to be a digital future um, and it'll be human free where they use robots to build like structures, roads um, and all that. And drones will monitor the site, but and they'll like record the process and solve the problems. But we're obviously um, already doing this with building information modelling and that's sort of called BIM and we use this to solve problems in, before they arise. Um, but obviously we still need humans to oversee um, the works and send the instructions to the robots. But there's definitely um, jobs out there for tech minded people, people who like to use um, Minecraft from a young age, build the Sims houses um, and get involved in construction. So there's so many jobs out there that aren't necessarily in the front line, as I said before. So I'm just going to sort of um, tell you a couple of my top tips that I would say for working in the industry and maybe attending an or having an apprenticeship. Um, would be to use your network like as best as you can. There's always someone willing to help, whether that be in your studies or if you want a bit more information and things like that. So there's always like mentor programs. Um, I just joined a FemEng, which is Females in Engineering mentor program. So I actually mentor a young student from uh, Glasgow University. So um, I get to talk about like civil engineering and I can help her develop her skills and we get to um, chat about engineering. So you've always got to remember as well. So this is top tip number two would be that you're bringing in your fresh new ideas. Like you guys are the future generation and we can really learn from you. Now I'm saying that as a 23 year old. So you guys coming in at 17 have totally different. Um, you'll have more tech <laughs> than me. Um, I mean, when I started out, I had to show people how to turn on an iPad because they'd been in the industry 30 years but they'd never used BIM and a construction iPad. And that, that was the funniest thing for me, having to teach other people. Um, and that's what's really good about the industry is that it's two-way learning. Um, number three would be, be willing to be out of your comfort zone. So this is where you grow. So you've really got to push yourself. So me being out of my comfort zone was when I was in university studying for my exams and then still had a full-time job to do and still had to have a life. So I really had to work on my my balancing because if I didn't, I, I don't know what I would have done. Um, behaving positively is a huge thing as well. So you've always got to remember that you're representing yourself and um, while you're out doing things, you're out, you could be potentially representing a company. So you've got to talk positively and, and um, really like learn how to be an in industry. And then um, Another one would be um, just your teamwork. So always like encourage others to join in and um, you can learn different leadership styles as well. So um, I think that's a huge part of construction because you're not on your own. You may be working on your own and you have to solve your own problems, but there's always a team there um, and, and really use that team. So that's kind of um, a bit about me and my journey. So if you do have any questions, um, please put them in the chat now and hopefully we can answer them. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Bethany. So really, really insightful there. And I find it really interesting hearing about the, the opportunities within Balfour BD and the exciting prospects of the, the future for Balfour BD and the construction sector. 
uh, also, uh, I realised the the value of like the the sewage a bit more and like <laughs> the transport of water and stuff into our, our households and schools. Uh, and the fact as well that you've had so so much experience from a very young age, uh, getting into all these different opportunities and progressing to where you are now at the, the age of 23, I think is absolutely fantastic. And it's really, really good for uh, everyone to to get that insight. So I'm, I'm just going to kick off with a couple of questions uh, that have come in for us, Bethany, OK? So one of the questions that has come in is, what tasks do you have to do on a, a daily basis? So um, I'm quite lucky in that, um, as I said in my sort of talk, day to day is not the same. Um, you may start out the day the same, so we'll have like a team meeting. And um, this is while I was still on site. Um, we'd have like a team meeting in the morning to make sure everyone knew what they were doing for the day. Um, you'd then go out on site and go and speak to, um, say you had curbers on site and you had joiners, you'd go and speak to your different teams and make sure that they had all the information, they knew what they were doing. Um, you'd maybe have to go out and do a survey, make sure that um, the roads were the right levels and just check, do like quality checking. Um, you'd maybe have um, a different team doing a road road laying, so you'd have to go and make sure that they knew um, that the tar was being put down properly to the right levels. Um, and then you'd have like your, your sheets to fill in. Um, and, and it was just different every day. So you, you could have two days beside each other completely different. Um, and then you sort of end the day on a meeting with everyone um, just to make sure that they knew what was happening for the next day. While in the office, um, the day sort of started out very similar. You'd have a meeting to make sure everyone knew what was happening, what jobs were coming in when I was working in tenders and which projects were coming in to look forward to and um, what planning needs done, what projects need completed like soon. So you'd, you'd really have to plan your day. Um, but obviously I'd worked with diff lots of different people. So so, and then usually on site as well and when I was studying for my degree I would have a long 12 hour day and then I would come home have my dinner and I'd have to study so um, that, that was what my days used to look like um, but yeah it's totally changed now. Thank you Bethany. So it sounds like you had a lot of uh, balancing to do between all of these these things that you were doing so uh, that, that's really good as well to, to get that insight into how, how to manage those type of things. Uh, another question Bethany that has come in, uh, a really good question, uh, when are apprenticeships available at Balfour Beatty? So apprenticeships are obviously available every year and um, this year we took on I think between the apprenticeships, trainees and graduates, over 300 people. And um, so usually around, they start usually in September time, but I think it's um, sort of so that um, your end of your school year, so sort of February time, you can start looking. We've got them on our website um, and you can click through and go into like the recruitment page and then you can come to assessment centres and things like that. So usually about February time, I think they start looking and then they'll go up on the website. I want to say March, but don't don't quote me on that one. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, some really, really interesting questions coming in here. Uh, one of the next questions is, what type of pay can you get for entry level and then progression wise? So um, entry levels, oh, I was slightly different in, I was an apprentice, so I started on apprentice wages, which was just the government um, wages. And then obviously through my time, I've had pay rises um, every six months and every year that I've been working. So it differs on each company. Um, and obviously sometimes you'll get um, bonuses on jobs and things like that. So that there's certainly um, sort of movement in the, the pay, not everyone's the same. Um, but yeah, I started off on like apprentice wages, so um, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, and what one of the questions that has come in, and th this is really important for young people now, uh, between the next couple of years, trying to make decisions regarding subjects. So the question is, what subjects would you recommend I do at school? Um, so I spoke about um, a couple of my few favourite projects, um, project subjects, um, which would have been like Graphcom, um, technical studies, so a lot of the drawing. Um, I also did practical woodwork, which came in really handy for industry. But maths is a huge one. Um, you always used to sit in maths and be like, why am I doing Pythagoras? I'm never going to use this in real life. 
but I use Pythagoras every single day in my job. Um, so I was really grateful that I listened during that. So algebra as well, you use that um, quite a bit. Um, also physics, um, physics came in really handy. Um, English because you're you're always sort of writing reports. So it's sort of your basic, like your um, main subjects. And then even the likes of geography came in handy for engineering because it wasn't just geographical places that we learned about. We learned about rock formations. We learned about stalagmites, stalactites, so different working areas. So currently um, we've just got a project up in the Cairngorms, so it's going to be quite snowy and things like that, and it's quite rocky. So we need to know what type of rock we can drill into that is going to be strong. And that's the things you learn in geography. We learn about different rock types. So it was quite good to be able to relate subjects that you just told, thought were totally irrelevant to, to um, real life. Brilliant, thank you. And in terms, Bethany, as well of like uh, COVID, how how is the the industry coped, and what's the opportunities going to be like after this? So, um, actually, for COVID, I mean, uh, me personally, I ended up on furlough for a couple of weeks, but um, the industry itself had to really, really um, up their game, as I guess you could say. We had projects that never even shut. We had NHS hospital projects. The guys worked the whole time throughout COVID. Um, Balfour BT were actually part of the uh, the new hospital in the SEC, the Louisa Jordan. Um, so we had to really like rally up and um, like get our project teams ready to deploy and build this hospital so quickly. Um, but now COVID's kind of um, like passed us the, the, the first part. Um, the industry is really sort of picking up again. Um, we can't stop construction. Um, if we stopped construction, there'd be no new houses, no new railways. Um, as I mentioned, Crossrail earlier on, so that's down in London. Um, all these people are hoping for new um, subway, underground tunnels, things like that, to, to be able to get to work quicker. And if we stopped construction, they wouldn't get it for years and years. So um, I think the industry is really on the up again, and it's really great to see. Thank you. Uh, a really good point that you, you made there, Bethany, was you can't stop construction, really. Uh, so we, we need it to, to take place now and in the future for, for homes to be built and uh, buildings to be fixed and things like that. And so a, a, a really vital piece of information. Thank you. Uh, another question there is what are the most challenging parts of your job? The most challenging. Now, I always get asked this and I always say, Living in Scotland, um, it's definitely the weather sometimes. Um, we're out all year round in all weathers, whether that be lovely 20, 30 degrees in summer or the minus degrees in the winter and the snow and the cold. So um, I think that's one of the most challenging parts. Um, but um, actually in real life, um, it's the problem solving as well. You could be given a drawing and you've got to figure out if that's going to work. Um, obviously, you've got your team there. But it's sometimes quite a challenge to to understand what's happening in that drawing because you aren't the one that's created that. It's been created in someone else's head and you've got to figure out what they want and how it's going to work. So that was a huge challenge sometimes. But obviously, once you get past that challenge and build the, the structure, it's such an achievement, um, which is always what we try to do is look for the positive and things. So. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's some, something there as well that everybody getting into the construction sector needs to think like with the with the mind working out in the, the bad weather and all types of good weather and stuff in the, the summer and stuff like that as well. So thank you for that, Bethany. So uh, on the back of that, what would be the most enjoyable parts of your job? Um, I think because every day is different, I think the motivation keeps you going. Um, I think being able to, as I mentioned, like drive over a bridge that you've been involved in or go past a, a building that you've you've been a part of. I think that's really enjoyable. Um, but also dealing with lots of different people in the day. Um, I mean, I've dealt with people that are sort of twice my age and now they're really good friends. Like you just, I think that's, it's really good that there's so much to experience. And, um, but yeah, probably, um, and my mum will hate this, but like probably taking my mum over the bridges that I've been involved in. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Bethany, so we've got a final question. Uh, 
do you have to travel around in your job? I know you've mentioned bits about that before, but uh, could you give a wee bit more of a, an insight into traveling about the ground for your job? Yeah, so um, in construction, obviously, they're not going to build something in your backyard. So um, you do have to travel. Um, I have travelled all over the country with Alpha Beauty. Um, I've even travelled across the border down to England to work on different projects down there. Um, so, for example, I, I stay in, in Morrishire. So um, I've had to work in Thurzo. I was part of the substations up there. So that, that was quite a distance for me. Our head office is in Glasgow or Motherwell. So I've had to travel down there and I had to move um, down down across the country to, to be able to work there for my secondments. So um, I, I think that's one thing that you do have to understand. You have to move with construction. Construction doesn't move with you. Um, and I think that's really important that some people forget. Um, I mean, I've worked over in Aberdeenshire. So during the week I would live away and then I'd come home at the weekend. So, But also I think that's a really big part of growing up. Um, and I was lucky to be able to be supported through that, through my through my work, which was good. Thank you, Bethany, for the, the insight. Some fantastic information and really, really nice points there to, to touch on and stuff for young people there to, to go away from today. Uh, I've certainly found it very, very useful. So thank you. Uh, so just, just to give you a bit more of an insight, you can find out more about careers at www.myworldofwork.co.uk. You can also find lots of information there that can help you make choices about your career. And it can also help give you a bit more motivation into the types of jobs that you may not have considered before, which is really, really good. There's also tools on the, the My World of Work website to help you try and figure out your, yourself as an individual and figure out your strengths as well. So that's us come to the, the end of today's session. I personally would just like to say a big thank you to Bethany from Balfour Beatty for taking the time to join us today and give us uh, such a good overview and lots of insight into the, the construction sector. I find it really useful and I hope that you watching this today have also found it really useful. I also just want to say thank you to everyone who has taken the time to join us. And if you do want to learn more about apprenticeships or if you would like to learn more about the, the things that we've discussed today with Bethany, you can have a look at the My World of Work website for one. Uh, you can also have a look at apprenticeships.scot and digitalworld.net. Uh, you can also speak to your careers advisor. And this is something that I would personally say to you. If in school you're not sure about what to do or what, what's the next steps for you, then the careers advisor is somebody that is there to help you and are always willing to, to try and support and guide you in the way forward in your journey. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning of the session, it has been recorded, so you can view it as many times as you want at a later date and have a look at a list of the future sessions that are coming up over the, the next couple of months and into the new year as well. So to find out more, watch the video back or see more videos coming available, go on to the My World of Work YouTube channel. So. Finally, I just want to say a big thank you for joining the session. I hope that you find this really useful and I really appreciate Bethany coming along today as well to, to join us from Balfour Beatty. Thank you.